Okay, here is a very nice impromptu card effect that you can do anywhere for anyone. You begin with a, a shuffle deck of cards, and that's true. Okay, and we're going to need just uh, 16 random cards. Now, for my regular viewers, I um, want to assure you uh, we're not going to be using a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16, which is what many of you would assume since we use 16 in that setting a lot. Okay, this will really be a random collection of 16 cards. Okay, um, and in particular, we actually just need uh, two piles of eight. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, and we can even kind of move around a bit. And we'll even mix these individually. I think, I think that's, is that eight? <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, let's see. Straighten them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. And I'm assuming it's the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And just to be, you know, super safe here, let's just mix those. And if you were here, you could do all of this, by the way. Okay, and then we'll gather these up the uh, best we can. And now what I need you to do is point to uh, either one of the piles. It's a free choice, okay? So maybe you'll point to the one on my right here. So what you need to do is you need to cut off any number of cards whatsoever and take a look at the bottom card, okay? Now, it's okay if I see it here, especially for the tutorial. So the bottom card is the King of Clubs. Okay, so that is the card to remember. That is your special card. Okay, now instead of setting it back down where it came from, we're going to set it on the other pile and then bury it under the remaining cards. Okay, now um, since we kind of have an idea as to where the cards are, where that particular card is, uh, why don't we cr uh, create a mess here with the Klondike Shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Okay, so that will really help bury the cards somewhere in the packet. In fact, I need you now to um, choose any number between 1 and 16, uh, which is the packet size here. Any number whatsoever. Okay. Well, I don't have a spectator, so let's say they choose seven, okay? So you just deal out, and they can do the deal. In fact, they can do all of this, by the way. I mean, you could just instruct them. Uh, so seven was the number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put the rest on top, okay? And now we're going to play a little lie detector game in which the cards are actually going to be able to discern whether or not you are telling the truth, okay? So, in particular, what I need you to do is, I guess, decide first off, <laughs> are you going to tell the truth or lie? And I'm going to be asking you, what is the identity of the card that you saw just a moment ago? Okay, so if you want to think about it for a second or you have an answer already, that's great. Okay, and so to begin this lie detection procedure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spell out the phrase, your card is the, and then we're going to have you fill in the blank there. Okay, so your, Y-O-U-R, card, C-A-R-D, is, I-S, the, T-H-E. So what was your card? What's the identity of your card? Okay, now the spectator can give any answer that they want. They can be truthful or not. Uh, most spectators will not be truthful. So let's say they lie and they say uh, it was the ace of clubs. Okay, and so all you need to do now is say, okay, ace of clubs, A-C-E-O-F-C-L-U-B-S, ace of clubs, and then we'll just spell out your card is the, and see where that leads us. Y-O-U-R, your card, C-A-R-D, is I-S, the, T-H-E. What's the card again that you claimed you saw? The Ace of Clubs. We will now find out the truth thanks to the powers of an ordinary deck of cards.
I am sorry, but you have been caught in a lie. The card that you actually saw was the king of clubs. I suppose in some ways it's not too far off, but it is off nonetheless. Okay. Okay, so uh, how does this work? Well, I may not tell you all of the hows here, but um, if you do everything that I did, this works <laughs> every time. Um, now, let me give you the parameters for the packet size. Uh, you can use any even number of cards between 16 and 22. And this will work for you every time. It's not left to chance, okay? Um, so I decided to go with 16 since it's kind of a common packet size that I've been using and maybe throw off the spectator a little bit because they'll probably assume it's a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16 when it's not. This is a completely different principle being used here. Oh, in fact, uh, let me point out that I will put in the description below a link to a series that will teach you all about a principle that I refer to as the third times a charm principle. Okay, and it has to do with the spelling out that we did. We spelled out your card is the, and then we spelled out the stated card name, and then we spelled out your card is the, and it does something special uh, with the packet. Okay, so I'll have a link to a whole playlist that initially kind of teaches you what the principle is, and then it gives you a whole bunch of wonderful examples using the underlying idea here. Okay. So I think that's really all I need to tell you here. So if you actually go through, uh, you break it up into two halves. Total number of cards is between 16 and 22. And, and then have the spectator cut off any number. Look at the bottom. Put those cards on top of the other pile. Put the remaining cut cards on top of that. Perform one Klondike shuffle. And then from there, you have them choose any random number between 1 and 16. And then you just do this spelling routine. Your card is the, and then spell out the name of their claim card, and then spell out your card is the, and their card is guaranteed to rise to the top. Okay, which is really pretty, pretty remarkable. So this effect uses uh, at least two or three ideas. I share on my channel and I encourage you to look at the series I've linked below. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.